So I want you to bow in prayer with me. I, wanna, I just want to pray for some folks, and I want to name them. And I want you to pray for me. You don't need to know all the circumstances. I might say something. Let me, let me just bow your heads. I want to pray with me just for a second. Lord, I, w- I want to pray that we, as our life groups get ready to start back on August the 7th, that we would understand that coming to church is not enough. We need to know the word so we can teach the world the truth. Our, 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 our time on August 25th is a night of, we call it August nights around here. It's about baptism and teaching our folks about baptism and communion and fellowship. Lord, I want to pray, Lord, this morning. I I just want to pray for Carolyn this morning, Lord, that you would just touch her body in healing. I pray, Lord, for Danny Haynes. Lord, he had surgery, and I want to pray for him this morning, for for healing for his leg. Lord, I want to pray for my, I call him Cousin Chuck, just on on that list, just waiting to get those lungs replaced. And Lord, I want to pray, Lord, for, for Johnny. I just lift him up. For Bobby Bell, I lift him up. And Lord, I, I want to pray for those folks because they're such good people. And we just ask you right now to heal. God, draw us closer to you this morning, we pray in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. Let's give the Lord a praise, right? Amen. So I want you to take your Bibles, and I want you to turn with me to 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter in verse 20. Now, if you happen to be fortunate enough to have the message translation, this will be gooder. So I want to talk to you this morning about the struggle is real. So I want you to turn to your neighbors and, and say, the struggle is real. Go ahead. Okay. I was talking to some of my sweet friends a while ago. We were talking about getting older. It's, it's, the struggle is tr- really hard when you get older. I, I, I want to uh, tell you because as I'm going through this nine-week series that I created to get us up so we understand that life is a struggle, we set this series up by teaching you who is the devil, who he was and how he came and then what he does. So I want to talk to you this week about in the struggle of life, one of the things that I believe is a struggle for us is representing Jesus. Have you ever been in a situation in just in the last month that the struggle was real? Raise your hand as a witness for the Lord. So I'd like to tell you a story. This past week, we started remodeling, and we had to do a lot of work on Sunday night to get all situated in this thing, and it's a lot of work, and we don't like to do stuff on Sunday night, but sometimes the ox is in a ditch, and we had a big one. And when you're trying to remodel something that's 20 years or older, it's, it's tough sometimes. So throughout the week, we were working hard, and we were, Wednesday was the time for the flooring. We had to go get the flooring. Wednesday morning is when we're going to start putting the flooring down. And it's beautiful flooring. Let's give the Lord a praise clap for that remodeling job. Would you just do that? So I had went up on the Friday before, made sure they had 249 boxes of what we were using. And I went back on Monday afternoon to make sure they would set aside my 130 boxes, and, 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 and they did. So I draft two people to go with me. One was Steve Busman. He's my hippie friend over here. And then Vic Rogers, who's now, he's going to be a hippie because we're going to teach him how to grow his hair out long. And we went up, and we had two trucks, and we everybody's working, and so we go up to um, floor decor, am I right on that, I think? Floor decor, I go up, I walk in, and my fr- I have a friend, I developed a friendship with him because um, when I was at floor decor, I had problems. It's, every time I go in, there's something wrong. So Gary comes in, he knows I'm coming, and they've got everything ready for me. And, and so you know, this la- not this Friday, but the Friday before, we had this major technology problem throughout the world. Airplanes couldn't fly. If you talk to my friend Jerry, he would tell you about airplanes couldn't fly. Banking was hitting the thing. Um, you know, um, Laura Lee, she had to work like all, trying. she's over all some of that web stuff, trying to stop all them crooked people from stealing. And, and, and so everybody knew that. So we go in, and we, we leave here at 9.15. And so we leave, and we're driving up. Me and Steve, we're talking about everything in the world, and Vic's behind us. And, and so we get there, and we have our own area to pull over to the side. Now, remember, the sermon's about representing Jesus, Right? 
Everybody look at your neighbor and say, representing Jesus. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, tell them we're representing Jesus here. So we get there and pull in. So uh, Steve lets me off. I go in, and Gary's there waiting on me. We, we give him a certified check, basically, and he takes it. it. It won't go through. I don't know of anybody that won't take a certified check for a check. And um, it's kind of expensive to put flooring down. Let me just tell you. One box costs $71 after tax. One box. It has seven pieces in it. We, we buy nothing but the best around here. I want it long term. And so what happens, we're there, and he's trying to help me and, 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 and the system. And the store has nobody in the store. So me and Steve and Vic, we kind of realized they were every, every other check was a problem. Every credit card was a problem. And I'm thinking, oh, Lord. And so... We're thinking, you know, this is all going to clear up. Now, did I tell you, we left here at 9.15. So we're there probably 20 minutes to 10, maybe 15 minutes to 10. And, and, and they're working. Well, they're doing everything they can. No, there's $375,000 worth of product sitting on the dock that they can't deliver because nobody's stuff's going through. It wasn't just us. Anything. So we're trying to be patient. <clears throat> so... Me and Steve and Victor, we're trying to represent Jesus. And so, can I just share something with you? Um, I, my temper is about that long. How long is yours? Put your little fingers up and tell me how long yours is. That's why we're all in the same boat. So, I don't need any help from the devil or anybody to help me get mad or get angry. Do, do I have a witness in here about that with me? Is anybody like that? Yeah, I thought. Yeah. Ain't but two of us are going to admit it. Me and Sandy, that's the only two of us going to admit it in here. But what happens in this is that I'm trying to be patient. And let me tell you, when I preach you a sermon on Sunday, I've already been tested in the week. So we're in there, and we now, it's now 11, and now it's 12. And we're trying to figure out what to do. And did I tell you, my patience is about, and it's shrinking. And so I'm trying to be a witness for the Lord, because I've been working on this sermon. I would go home after leaving here at 9, 10 o'clock at night, go home and work on it trying to make sure I have everything right. And, and so when I get frustrated, what I do is I walk. I, I, I like to walk. It's the only way I can calm down. And so Steve and Victor were sitting there watching me. Here he goes. He's getting ready to blow. He's getting ready to blow. And he's, I walk away, and that's the only way I know how to handle it. So finally, um, it must have been 1 o'clock or so, we came up with a genius idea. Now, I want you to listen to this idea. So we said what we're going to do is we'll just, we'll reverse the situation. What we'll do is we'll tra wire transfer. I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you put money through a wire and make it transfer. I don't know how to do that. But, it, but that's what we did. So our bank is right down the street, South State. Everybody will have an account there. And so I'm doing that free advertising. And so they, they've got their end. Matter of fact, on their end, they can see where the money's transferred. But somebody at Bank of America, it's your fault, Lord. And what happened, they're there. All someone's got to do is hit that button. And nobody was hitting the button. And so we come up. Steve is really, Steve is a lawyer by trade. Steve Busman is a lawyer. So he decides, he and Vic decide they got a deal. They got an idea. So here was the idea. So the, bank, the Florida court has the money. You with me, right? This is where you say, okay, I'm good preaching. So, so what happens, they can see it. Florida court can see all these transactions. So Steve comes up with a great idea. He's a lawyer. And he says, what we'll do is, is we'll take the two trucks and they'll put on the, most of it on the two trucks. And we'll leave you here as a hostage. So they got to come back because we got 30 more boxes we got to get. Me being, trying to keep from being exploding, I go and pitch the idea like an idiot because what Steve tells me. I go pitch the idea. And the guy said, um, exactly what he said. He said, so we, we can't do that. I said, you're telling me that I'm not worth $11,000 as a hostage? <laughs> so finally, they turn it down, and 
you know what I did. When they turned it down, I started to walk. Steve and Vic, Steve and Vic were saying, he's getting ready to blow. He's getting ready to blow. And I'm just walking, and I'm trying to speak to people. Because the best thing to do when you're upset is go get away from the problem. Go walk and speak. I'm, the back, I'm talking to the wall back here, witnessing to the wall. And so finally I come back. It's now 4 o'clock. Did I tell you we left at 9.15? So at 4 o'clock, the big manager, and he was big, he came out and he said, you know, I, I can't let you take the product. I said, wrong answer. I said, my patience is thin and worn out. And I said, look, I've done everything. You can see all that. And look, I tried to let, let me be a hostage. You wouldn't even let me. I'm not even worth $11,000. <laughs> Bless him, Lord. I, I love old people. So, so I'm sitting there, and, and, and I, I'm telling you, the wire transfer is a done deal. It's, and I'm trying not to lose my witness. I tell you to do it. I'm trying not to. And, 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 and God is my witness, and Steve and Vic, they were standing there, and, and the guy's giving, he's a big old rascal. He's getting ready to get whooped. And um, so I, I said to him, I said, you know, I've been patient. And there's one guy, there was a bunch of people, a bunch of contractors in there, and one guy, he gave them the, he gave them the other version that I would never want to do. He just cussed everybody out and left. And he had $55,000 laying on the, on the dock. So finally, I'm talking to him, and he's trying, to, he's trying to talk to me. And finally, my little buddy, Gary, he's about this tall, good guy. And he hollers because he knows. He sees it, too. The preacher's getting ready to blow. And I'm trying to represent Jesus in this. I really am. And finally, Gary says, it went through. It went through. And I'm going, thank you, Jesus, because I was getting ready to blow up. So we come back, and everybody, everybody's accusing us of doing a lot of things that sinners would do. And so I come back, and we're all talking, and everybody's laughing. And Sandy comes up with this comment, and she says, well, I'll tell you right now, if my husband left at 9.15, and he didn't get back here to after 5, and he told me he was at Florida Court, Jeff, she said, you'd, you'd be a dead man. <laughs> so my point here is, if I get to this point, is that you need to understand that you're always representing Jesus. I have never been so happy to get in my truck and come home. And what I'm trying to tell you is, is that in life sometimes, these problems that we deal with really do make a difference. So I, I want to, I gave you this verse. So I want to just, I want to do something I don't normally do. I want to, I want to give you this reading of this paragraph from the translation called The Message. And I, wanna, I'm, I want you to stay right there. But I want you, this is a really important statement that's made in the beginning of this paragraph, verse 16. Because of this decision, we don't evaluate people by what they have or how they look. We are God's representatives. God uses us to persuade men and women to drop their differences and enter into God's work of making things right between them. We are speaking for Christ himself now because friends with God, he is already a friend with you. And when this whole thing came out and started looking, I began to realize that what we need to understand is is that you and I are representatives of Christ. We're speaking for him, not ourselves. And I don't know if you realize, but what is a representative? Now, I know some of you know about politics. I eat and breathe it. I just don't preach it. And so what happens, we represent in South Carolina, we have eight representatives in the United States House, and they represent all of the state of South, South Carolina. Those eight people represent over 5.3 million people in South Carolina. And through this whole thing, what you understand is that when we're, uh, what is a representative? He or she is, is out on a mission to build relationships. Every one of us in this room, and listen to the me on the sound of the Facebook Live and, and all those things, we are representatives to, for Jesus in the world. 
Did you know that as a country, we send foreign representatives, and some of you have heard of ambassadors. I don't, I, we don't, I don't call them that anymore. But they have representatives in all England and Israel and Ukraine and all these different places. And we are to be represented because, see, this is not our home. If you need to understand, earth, this world is not your home. Heaven is your home. You, you then will be like a foreign person in this world. When you become a Christian, you will not walk to the drum of the world. Because the world is going this way and Christians are going this way. We're trying to do what God's called us to do. Throughout history, we, we have representatives and try to do things to make things. You have a Secretary of State, a Secretary of Defense, and all these people are working. And the goal of a representative is to bring reconciliation between us and someone else. See, if you're not a Christian this morning, you are an enemy of God. And I hate to tell you that. That's the truth I'm laying out there for you. And what our goal as Christians, we are a representative of Christ. We're to help our friends who are not Christians and those that we consider enemy to teach them right. Now, I know this is hard for you to understand, but I have a lot of folks who are not Christians. Now, they're not actually my enemy, but they are an enemy of God because they don't believe in God. And I'm just being honest with you about it. We are called as representatives to help bridge that between them and the Lord. We don't save them, but we give them the truth in love and good attitudes, even at floor decor. For me, I got friends there. I became real close to Steve and Victor during that eight hours, real close. And what happens is the only way we can help people is to spend time with them. I want you to write this down. This is my motto to you. We have to learn to invite people, okay? So I want to teach you. If you want to win people to Christ, first thing you got to do is you got to invest in people. First word, Invest. You have to invest in people, and you have to spend time with them, and you have to encourage them, and I'm going to show you how to do that in just a minute, but you have to do that. And then when you've invested in them, then you can invite them to Christ. It doesn't work. I've seen people do it. Do you know right now, in this area, if you went and saw 20,000 people, you might win one person to Christ, but that does not mean we quit. There are other ways to do it and work through it. So what we need to understand is God has given you the authority to be the representative for him to invite people. We're going into territories where things are very difficult. Some of us, uh, we need to understand that our knowledge is important. He's, this is what Paul writes in Colossians 4, 6. And it is the word of the Lord. Let your conversations be full of grace, seasoned with salt. So that you may know to answer everyone. He says, look, you need to make sure as a representative, you know what you're talking about. I was in seminary. I was an old man, 38 years old, going to seminary. I go in there. They got all these young whippersnappers in there. And, and, and there's me and one other fellow. He's about 200 years old. I was only 100. And we're in the room, and the, the guy comes in and says, and we're taking the Old Testament class he says, I want to ask someone to stand and give all the books of the Bible in the Old Testament. Immediately, of course, I was trained, because when, and we were trained to do Bible drills and all that stuff, and you didn't want my mama to be mad. So you better have to answer all the questions. And so nobody was going to move, and I said, I want to take a shot. So I, I, I took the shot. I gave them all 39. It was flat, a miracle. I wanted to cheat, but I didn't. But all 39, and he said, sir, your name? I said, Barry Yates. Let me, let me spell that so make sure. I said, the end of the book, go out there and check me in and good. He said, you already got an A for the class. There's 75 people in that room who are preachers and they don't know the Bible. They caught me on a good day. Here's the point I'm trying to make. You and I can only share what we know about Christ. I only expect you to know everything about Christ. But share what you know. When you share what you know, then you can help people. You, you learn to help people. So every Christian then is a representative of Christ. We have qualities and characteristics of, of what a good ambassador or a representative would do. We, we don't appoint ourselves. God appoints you. When you meet people, God has placed you in a divine purpose to speak a word. You don't have to be dogmatic. You don't have to argue with people. 
Show them love and grace. You, you don't have to worry about everything. You, sometimes we need to understand we have clear instructions. It's called the Bible. We need to understand sometimes people are going to insult you because you're a Christian and they're not, and they've heard all the negative things. They see all the stuff that's on TV about preachers. You let a prominent preacher in this country do something wrong or get caught in something, and the news media will crucify them. But you won't see it when someone else does something. The representative is, is the whole idea is not to gain something from that person, but it's to give them something. And, and for you and I, we, we have an opportunity to serve people, and that's how we make the difference in people's lives. So I want to share with you just a second, what is your role today? If you're representing Jesus, what is your role? Your role is to represent Jesus in the world. Paul writes in Philippians 1.27, be sure that you live in a way, and notice this word, make sure you live in a way that brings honor to the good news of Christ. So for you and I, we live in a world, and your goal is to build relationships. And that is one of the ways that you point people to Jesus Christ. How many of you have a relationship with somebody at Walmart? How many of you shop at Walmart? Raise your hand. So today, don't go today. They don't need you up here today. You need to go on Thursday at 11 p.m. at night. What happens, you get to meet people and you get build friendships with them. And that's the thing I'm trying to tell you as Christians. We're making, listen to me, I don't want to make nobody mad here today. You're making Christianity too hard. Some of us will get so dogmatic about things. Listen to me, this is a motto you need to get. Don't become so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. Be yourself. Understand you make mistakes. So I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, did you make a mistake this week? Go ahead. Okay, now, I was going to tell you to turn to them and say, uh, tell me what it is, but don't, 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 no, no. So, so, so what happens, God has called you to be a representative. Let me, let me teach you something. Now, she's going, this is going to be on the screen. It's not in your notes because I didn't have enough room. The call, Romans 1, 7 says, it's called to be his people. John 15 says, called to be God's friend. 1 Corinthians 1, 2 says, called to be holy. Now, Holy just means to live the best life you can. Then in 1 Corinthians 1, 9, it says, call him to fellowship. This is what we've been doing all week. We've been fellowshipping. 2 Corinthians 5, speak for Christ. You've been called to speak. You're called to serve each other freely. And I can just go on and on. I'll give you the last one. 2 Thessalonians 2, 14, called to share his glory. You and I need to understand, live a life to that which God has called you. He wants us to be people. And when you're a Christian, you're going to be considered a radical person. A radical person. I don't want you going out and doing crazy things. But if you let the Holy Spirit go first, everything will be fine. Everything will be fine. And a life will be so important because when I got saved, I radically changed. And we grow. Where are you taking that baby to? That baby's helping me preach. Don't be messing with that baby. Be sure that you live in a way that honors God. So this first thing is we got to do that. The second thing we got to do is you've been called and given a mission in life. Every one of us in this room, if the struggle of life is real because the mission is tough. I mean, some of you have jobs that are high-powered jobs and they're so stressful. And some of you are working like everybody else. You're working 12 and 13 hours a day. And you can't get caught up. And we understand that. Lorson, I understand that. Some of you do it or are doing it all the time. But even in that, you've got a mission to the people around you to share. Uh, Acts 20, 24 says, I don't care about my own life. He says, the most important thing is to complete the mission. So God wants us to understand the most important part of the mission is all of us helping to get to know and to settle the question of eternal life. That's the purpose. Do you know anybody that you know that you don't want to go to heaven? I hope you don't. I want you to be people that understand that we need to help people settle decency where we're going. And I don't know about you, but heaven is going to be wonderful. 
It's going to be the most beautiful place. There's no sickness. There's no sorrow. There's no crying. And there's no tears there. And I want to go there. He tells us that you and I have been given the authority to speak. When you speak, you speak for the Lord. Now, let me teach you something. And, and listen, hear me out. If you're a person who speaks for the Lord, but you're mean about it, and you want to argue about it, and you show no love and no mercy, no grace, something's wrong. Because Jesus says to show mercy and kindness, be humble and kind, and build, invest, invest. Who are you investing in is the question I want to ask you. Because you've been given the authority, Matthew 28, 18 through 20. You've heard it many, many times. And, and Jesus said, Jesus drew near and said to them, I have been given all the authority in heaven and on earth. Now I'm giving it to you to go. See, Jesus told the disciples that you're going to do greater things than I have. I don't know about you, but I, that's almost impossible. But in fact, it happens. Think of Billy Graham. He, he won, he led more people to Christ than you can ever imagine. It wasn't him doing it. It was through Christ through him. That's how you got to see this. It's not you. It's Christ being used through you. And he tells us sometimes that you have to be people to understand you have to adapt to situations. I, I, I was doing Steve's dad's service this week. It was outside, and, 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 and it was hot, and Steve was sweating. So was I. But we went at that service, that, that service totally different than any graveside service the folks there had ever seen. But Jesus was moving because we had the authority to share with them. See, you have the authority to share Christ with whoever. Just don't be mean. Don't be dogmatic. Listen to me. I'm going to give you a little piece of puzzle here. God does not need you to sell him to them he wants you to tell your story you find out your story talk to James Boykin ask him his story a ask him his story how Christ changed his life a go back and talk to Jack Hyde how the Lord changed his life and, 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 and Roger and all these people and what God has changed their lives and he's made a difference and they can only speak of what they do every Christian is a minister of the gospel. Now listen to me. Some of you people are going to say, what? Every person who knows Jesus Christ and is saved is a minister of the gospel. 1 Peter 2, 5 says, Like living stones, we are built upon a spiritual house to be holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Christ. We need to understand every Christian is a minister of the gospel, a priest, if you will. Every Christian has been given gifts by the Holy Spirit for the purpose of ministry. Your purpose is to lead people to Christ. He teaches us that no Christian has a function or a gift that is better than the other one. Everybody's equal at the foot of the cross. And I say that too because it's important. He tells us that he wants us to be people that are full of grace. Every Christian has received the person of the Holy Spirit. When you got saved, the Holy Spirit came and templed inside of you. That's how you know the Holy Spirit's living. When you walk up at floor decor for eight hours and you don't sin. You walk a lot. You walk a lot. And you walk a lot. It's better for you to walk away from it than to stay there and make a fool of yourself. This is the problem with Christians. We're doing this thing wrong. We think we live in a world where I have the right. When you became a Christian, you gave up all your rights. You became a Christian to act like Jesus. Even when people are mean and ugly, you still treat them with respect. Every Christian, now just hang with me just for a second. Every Christian is called to be more like Christ. Every one of us. Every one of us are being called to be like Christ. And every Christian is called to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. I tell you what, I've, I've got people in the church through this mission week showed us all kinds. There was 70 some people, and, and, and some of you are great, talented people, and then there's us. Do you know why God called me to preach? Because there's nothing else I can do. 
And what happens in this whole thing, some of you brought food. It's bad when you gain weight in a mission trip. I don't know who makes all these desserts, but they sure were good. I mean, cupcakes and all that stuff. And what you got to do is the preacher said, what you got to do when everybody leaves, you go in and take all the cookies you want and you go hide them. I gained my weight. So my question to you this morning is, are you doing your mission? God's given you a mission, and he's, are you doing his mission? You say, well, I'm a young person. God especially has given you a mission to reach other people at your school. Are you doing it? Just remember this. This is not your home. You're just passing through. And he tells us, if you're a believer, a follower of Jesus Christ, your home is not earth. Your home is heaven. Choose wisely. You represent him and you teach other people what he's doing. And the role is we build trust with people. Now, let me teach you this. The responsibilities of a representative. Now, in Congress, when you raise your hand, and you say, I'm going to stick to the Constitution of what it is. Not everybody does that. So as a Christian, let me teach you this. There's a responsibility as a Christian. You're to set an example. 1 Peter 2, 12 says, People who do not believe are living around you and might say that you're doing wrong. Live such a good life that we see the good things. Matthew 5, 16 was a verse that really jumped out at us. Week. Do good deeds. I'm not telling you that doing good deeds will get you to heaven. I'm not telling you that. The only way to heaven is to receive Jesus as your Savior. Read John 14, 1 through 3. That's how you get to heaven. He says the only way to heaven is through Jesus Christ. But good deeds are the things that Christians do. When Jesus turns the water to wine in the first miracle in the Bible, it was not grape juice, by the way. When he does that, he is being used the gift and talents to help others. When you bring food and you who bring biscuits that are homemade, bring them only to the preacher's office and sit them on my desk. So what happens, we are to be people that do that. In fact, I want to say something to you this morning so that you will know. As a Christian, you're never off duty. You're on call 24-7. You have to be because you never know what's going to happen. You don't know what's going to happen in your community. You don't know what's going to happen in your church. This past week, I was, um, I'm a historian. I love history. And some of you have read about uh, the First Baptist Church in Dallas, Texas, Dr. Jeffries, the old sanctuary was built in 1890, burned. Yesterday, there was a church in Dallas. It's actually called Pleasant Valley Baptist Church in Dallas. It burned. Now, I don't know what's going on. I don't have a clue. Don't have, I don't have any ideas. I'm just telling you that the preachers in both of those situations act like Christians should act and not pointing their fingers. See, if you're an ugly Christian, what happens is you're telling people, I'm demanding my way. I'm grouchy. I have an ego problem. All that. People are not going to listen to you. So what he wants us to do is to be like Jesus. How did Jesus treat? So let me show you that. What does the example of look like as a representative? Let me, let me show you one verse. Write this down. Galatians 5, 22 through 23. The Spirit, but the Spirit, the Bible says, this is Paul writing this, but the Spirit produces the fruit of what? Love. Let's say it together. Love. Love. Joy. Joy. Hold on. Y'all act like your mother-in-law has moved in with you. Say it with some enthusiasm, okay? We're going to start back. But the fruit of the Spirit produces the fruit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Do you realize, now listen to me, do you realize, you, some of you say, well, I've got some of those. Um, some of you are joyful, as long as your team's winning. Uh, some of you are faithful, as long as it's something you want to do. Do you realize in all of these nine, you have every one of them? You have every one of these spiritual gifts. Some of you are the kindest and loving people I've ever been some of you have joy beyond measure. Some of you have self-control. I'm leaving that word patience. I'm out of that one. But what happens to us, 
is that we have them all. And we use these things to share Christ. This is how Christians see. You're either making a good God look good or you're making God look bad. Be a person. Don't do stupid things. Don't do dogmatic things. Don't be cranky. That's not good. Listen, I get up two hours early to be able to talk to you people. Because I'm, a, I'm an old person. I don't like to get up in the morning. Especially after you've worked me to death all week. So what happens in this is that those, we learn those things that, we're not, that would cause us problems. And we make adjustments. I was reading a biography on Bob Barker not long ago. And his wife, his wife passed away just not too long ago. But she said she had to get up two hours early to stand him. Because when he gets up, he was all happy and smiley. And she, had to, she couldn't take him for the first two hours. But I just want to say this to you. I've learned, and I'm being honest with you this morning, representing Jesus. Let me tell you why we're having such a struggle in church. Why we're not filling up the pews. It's because people who turned us down as people that don't want to be around Christians, the reason people don't accept Christ, they've never met a Christian. You say, what? Because the Christians act crazy sometimes. We... We say things and we do things and we don't act like we don't care and we have fights in the church and they become public knowledge. And then the other thing is, is that they don't, they start putting stock in people and people let them down. Now listen to me. If you're here this morning, you're a guest with us this morning, I want to teach you something. Don't ever put your hope in people. Put your hope in God. Never put your trust in people. Put your trust in God. People can only carry you so far. They can only carry you so far. And then they stop. God never stops. God never lets you down. God does not let you fall. He's trying to help you. And so you must learn to share the message. I, I don't know about you, but, but in 2 Corinthians 5, anyone who is joined with Christ is a new being. The old is gone and the new has come. Our message is that God was making all human beings his friends through Christ. He wants to be your friend. And, and when you fail, I love what God does. When we fail, he picks us up, dusts us off, and keeps moving. Everybody needs to understand, we would love to have a second chance. I would love to have a chance to redo some things. Would you? I would like to have a couple chances to restart some things. I just want you to understand that why people struggle with Christianity, and I'll tell you what I've discovered. They don't want God running their lives. They want to do their own thing. But Christians do the same thing. Christians and non-Christians say, I, I want to run my own life. I want to make my own decisions. I, I, I don't want God telling me what to do. I, 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 don't, I want to do what I want to do. As a Christian, have you ever gone through that? Yes, I have. And what God has ta taught me is that it's all about pride. All you got to learn how to do is take the eye out and take the pride will go away. Because as a Christian, sometimes my pride can get me in trouble and lose my witness. Now, if you ever go to the floor in the core, I want you to take Victor and, Bi and Steve with you. And they'll help you. Because if I had lost my cool in there and got upset, I would have ruined my witness in front of those. So the key, if you don't want to lose your witness, walk. Seriously, walk away from it. Walk around. I've seen things in Florida Corps I've never seen because I'm always in a hurry. So I want to say this to you. You have been given the authority to close the deal. You say, what? I got a deal to close? Yes. When you invest in people, you invite them. And just say, you know, I don't, I don't know where you are. Have you ever given your life to Jesus Christ? You say, oh, my gosh, I got to do that? There's some people you need to ask the question. Some of you in this room are salesmen. Some of you are. Scott and Ron back there, they sell. Scott sells painting and Ron sells forwards, bless his heart. And uh, But somewhere along the line, you got to close the deal. Because there's people who would, it would receive Christ if you just asked them.
if you would just ask. And Donna's been gone for a couple of weeks and working with the Billy Graham program, and, and they've been down there, and she's asking people, and she's leading people to Christ all the time. She's going to all these programs. So I want to tell you the secret. If you want to win people to Christ, I want to teach you something. You must show love. See, in Ephesians 5, 2, it says, life is filled with love following the example of Christ. If you show love, you're representing to have a big heart because God is love. You need to read those things. So he tells us, how do we do it? Use your life to meet the needs of people around you. This past week, we had many needs in our church, and we're trying to get everything up to snuff, if you will. And many of you use your talents in your life to help us. 1 Thessalonians 2.8 says, We love you so much that we have given not only God's good news, but our lives too. We need to be people that love our neighborhood. I, I, I have to be honest, when John called me, John Benton called me and said, Preacher, I got this idea. Now, Deborah's warned me. Ben, John has lots of ideas. I'm just playing. So what happened, John came and got this idea, and he told me what it was, and I thought, okay, well, that sounds nice. Three crosses. I didn't know what it was. Knowing John, I knew it was going to be first class. And then all of a sudden, we're here working this week, and he told me, I'm going to try if I feel good, and the next thing, he started putting it up. And what happens is, we close our service on Wednesday night out there and pray for our church. And then we came back to work, of course. But John did what the Lord told him because, see, people will see those crosses and maybe, maybe just one will give their lives to Christ through it. Wouldn't that be worth it? You see, what I'm trying to tell you is we got to give each other respect. Everyone needs to respect everybody. Be gentle, the Bible says, and it teaches us this in 1 Peter 3, says at the end of it, it says, but do with it with gentleness and respect. We have to respect people. Listen to me a second. As a representative of Jesus Christ, you are not allowed to be disrespectful to anyone. You know why? Because God values people. We need to understand it doesn't matter who they are. It doesn't matter what they've done, where they've come from, how long it's been. We have to show people dignity. And the problem of it is it's the hardest thing for me sometimes. I just Sometimes I just get so frustrated with things that I have to be careful that I'm not acting like an idiot. I'm acting like a Christian. And it doesn't matter. My goal was to build bridges. And sometimes bridges are hard to build because people themselves, they don't want to do it. They want to do it their way. So let me, let me help you. So if I'm representing Jesus and I meet somebody, I've got to find common ground with them. You know, everybody where you live is not a Christian. Everybody that you work with are not Christians. Not everybody you meet are going to look like you and taste like you and dress like you and act like you. And this is where we need to find common ground. You'd be surprised. You want to practice? Let me teach you where to practice. Walmart. I'm being serious. You know how I can tell you why you can practice? Because you're going to have to stand in line to check out. That's the truth. This is where all of you people that shop at Walmart say what? Amen. Oh, come on. On three. One, two, three. That's right. That's right. So what I'm trying to say is this, is that we've got to find common ground. So I don't know about you, but when I find people I'm meeting and I start talking to them, I find common ground, and I start digging into their backgrounds. Not, I don't go to the FBI reports. I'm talking about where they come from. For example, Bob Stanley, uh, they lived out in Iowa. I, all I know is they have corn out there. He's a big Nebraska fan. How can be a Nebraska fan and live in Iowa? I don't know. But there's, there's difference in cultures. There, there are different people in this room. When you, you start talking to people, people are different. They have different backgrounds. Some of you are King James Bible only. Some of you are NIV Bibles only. I don't care which one it is. It's all, read it. It's all good. The point is that we've got to find common ground. So let me tell you why. Here's the closing of this. Because everything we do has eternal, listen to this, 
Everything we do has the eternal significance of people. I want everybody to go to heaven. The Bible says, Jesus says he wants none to perish. And it is not always up to me to win everybody. It's up to us to win people. It's us to be people together. It's us to act like we best can. I've given you the story because I struggle just like you do. So I want to ask you a question in closing. Is anyone going to be in heaven because of you? Or is anyone, you representing Jesus, is anyone going to be in heaven because of you? And that's the goal we want. We want to win people for Christ, and we also want to grow them. That's why we need you in life groups on August 7th, because we need you to grow. With every head bowed and every eye closed, I just want to challenge you this morning. If you understand, if you're a Christian this morning, you've received Jesus Christ, you are now a representative of the Holy Father. And he wants you to tell everybody about what's going on in your personal life and how God's helped you. And it's not easy when you do that. So I, want, I want, just want to pray a prayer for you this morning. And maybe in this prayer, I'm going to ask you directly, have you ever received Jesus as your personal Savior? And I want to give you a chance this morning, if you're here and you've never given your life to Christ, that you would consider giving it right now. Maybe you need to pray this in your heart. Look, I don't care if you pray it out loud. Maybe you need to pray this in your heart. Dear Jesus, I realize that following you means that we're ambassadors or representatives. It means to represent the world. I'm asking you to forgive me for falling and failing on my mission. Forgive me for the times I have been silent when I need to share my story. Forgive me for the times I have not been a good example. Forgive me for the times I have been just unloving. That I have returned evil for evil. I want my life to reflect you, Jesus. I want to use my life to meet the needs of other people around me. I want you to help me to learn to respect and treat every person with dignity, no matter who they are or what they say to me. I want to build bridge, I want to be a bridge builder. I, I don't want to be a wall builder. Help me to build bridges with people. And whatever I do, I want to do it with all my heart as you have commanded me to do it because I represent you, Lord. Help me to get out of my assembly, if you want to, Lord, my comfort zone, to reach one more person in January and Jesus in 24. 24 is halfway gone, Lord. Help me to be involved and win people. God, I want to ask you to give me the privilege of bringing one person into your family the rest of this year. I want to reach one more for you. Lord, help me when tough times come that I can focus on you and you'll walk me through it. Maybe this morning you're here and you've never invited Jesus to your, in your life. I want Jesus to say, maybe you need to say these words. I want to be on your team, Lord. I want to follow you. I want you to be God and you to be my boss and my manager. I want you to forgive me of my sins. I want to love people and I want to trust the rest of the year this way. Because the Lord wants to end that battle with you right now. Maybe someone here this morning, you're fighting for control. Who's going to be in control of your life? You need to give it to Jesus. So this morning, I'm going to open this altar. Maybe you need to come from where you are and come and just kneel. Maybe you need to come and stand. 